The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, hi folks, Basil Chapman, City for Larry Pesavento. I believe Larry's not feeling that well, so I said, you know what, I, I can switch things around, I can make this hour available because there's a lot that I, I wanted to do in my show, the Tiger Technicians Hour, that I never got to. I wanted to do the currencies, I wanted to do the commodities, so I thought, well, let's just do it right now, and I need to do it for my own, uh, for my own uh, work and for my subscribers. So I thought. Great opportunity, and of course, we all miss Larry. No, no one can replace Larry Pesavento, so I'm just using the hour. And let's look at it. The Dow's up 594 at 30,483. That little doji candle on Friday with on balance volume extremely oversold. Remember, I never talk about oversold or over, overbought in the stochastic or the MACD. I say they're getting to a level that I, it tells you that it's in, in a sell mode area that's under 10% or above 90%, which is very bullish for the stochastic. That's different. The on-balance volume does give me turnarounds. If you want to look at this vertical line, look at this vertical line right here, that peak in the on-balance volume, which occurred almost at the top at 30, 32,200s when the Dow made its last big move to that peak A failure pattern. Uh, so there's a chance that we're looking at a, a turnaround here with the on-balance volume maybe turning up today and continuing uh, from an oversold condition. So it's one of the reasons why we are along the Dow and uh, going into Friday, we were getting very over oversold and that was just a reason for having long positions in a number of areas. So, and right off the bat, we've got, who do we have? We have a call. We have Paul in Clermont, Florida. Hi, Paul. How are you? Uh, hi. How are you doing, Basil? <clears throat> I'm doing well. Thank you. <laughs> um, I, was, I was wondering, uh, good entry points for Steel Dynamics, STLD. So Steel Dynamics, SDLD, as, as uh, Paul mentioned, is, is the uh, symbol. Um, I looked at a number of these steel stocks, and I did this uh, for subscribers, not this past, I think I did some of it this past uh, Sunday, but last weekend, uh, Saturday before, I did them, and I said, there's a problem here with the steel stocks, the SLX, which is my indicator, which is the steel ETF, Van Eck, Vector Steel ETF, you can see closed underneath the 200 period moving average uh, about a week ago, and it's continued lower. And even today, it's only up 66 cents at 53.27. If I look at X, which is US Steel, lousy day today, it's up four cents at 19.93. Uh, um, 19 if I look at uh, what was it, NUE, I believe, New Core NUE. New core. Horrible. It had a gap. It gapped up today at the open. It, it's opened at 119 round number high. That was also uh, the, that was the open and the high of the day. And here it is at 113.81. So this is telling me in the big picture, we're not done in this whole recessionary aspect. For in fact, in fact, if we talk about recession, and I'll go back to your question about steel uh, SDLD. Now, steel dynamics—they do—they're in the steel business, but it's a little bit, a little bit different. Let me just see. CLF, I think, is also yeah. Cleveland yeah. Cliffs Inc. Flat roll steel and iron ore pellets. Um, also, very poor action. Had a fantastic high of 34, um, almost a round number high, and here it is at 17, cut in half. Yeah. So yeah, I'm just going to. It. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, I, pl I played that and lost my shirt. I, I, I didn't. Oh, I never sorry. sold out. Oh, you know the selling out is just so important. It's just, uh, it's you a know, it's all crooked it's battle. A, it, it, it's it's, a, it's all, all controlled by options and shorts with the with these steel companies. That's why you know. I mean, Cliff Cliff is is famous. You look at it on a Monday and you know just where it's going to close Friday. Uh, oh. Same with X. But these two, Nucor and Steel Dynamics, they're limited on options. 
Uh, steel oh. dynamics is probably stronger that way. There's, there's not a lot of man- manipulation, but today, with the market up five, six hundred points, this thing's doing nothing. So that is telling you that in the well, first of all, steel dynamics right now one, two, three, four, five, six. It gapped down about seven sessions ago, and it's for the last six sessions, including today, it's hugged the 200 period moving average at 71.22. So this is what I would recommend. I, I follow Steel Dynamics for years. I don't think we've ever, ever had a position in STLD, but I have followed it yeah. because it's one of those stocks that I forget about. And then I say, oh, what about steel? And then it's either had a huge move up or a huge move down. I said, how did I miss that? Well, the yeah. fact is, I, the <clears> fact <throat> is, I'm kind of pleased that it's off my list. It's only a watch stock that I just, I just keep it there as I do waste management and a couple of other stocks that are in the, the big, big cyclical area. And this is well, in I, the cyclical I, area. So if I, you had asked me, what about the monthly chart? I would have said, this is not bad. The monthly chart goes to 100, comes down to the 70 <clears> area or 69 area. Um, <clears throat> when you think that it's a steel company, um, I would say that's good, but if you if if you think of of the way I'm trying to look at the market by saying different areas, when when the administration or anyone talking about the administration talks about recessions, anyone on Wall Street, I always say you know if you go to the different areas, look at Sintas. This is now overalls, uniforms, rentals, in a shorter term from December. They've basically been in a recession. If you look at uh, the SLX, which I'm, I'm as, a, as a group, the sector itself, steel as a group from April, they've been in a recession. The deepness of the correction tells you that sales is not, uh, we, we've only got, in this particular instance, we haven't even got one full quarter yet, but it tells you that the earnings have to be disappointing at this particular point until there's a turnaround. And that to me says, in a way you can consider it as part of not the global or the, um, uh, the countrywide recession, but secular, in a sector itself. So I think that since April, we've been seeing a big slowdown in the whole seal sector. So. When does it catch up? And, and then all of a sudden, my rule of thumb, in fact, I was going to talk about it today. When the economists finally say, we're in a recession, as long as I can remember, that's pretty much almost going to be the low of the market. So we've still got a little bit of a way to go. But I'm just I, saying to you, be, be real careful with steel dynamics. The fact that it's hugging the nine period, the 200 period moving average for six sessions and even today, trying to get above it and it's, it just says, I would lay off. I'd rather be buying like a peak, a really strong peak B, so that you get a peak that you missed, and then it pulls back. And then as it takes out that left side high, I say, aha, the stochastic, instead of being at 9%, is maybe at 12%. The MACD is starting to improve. That's the way I would trade it. But right now, I think it's stuck. I don't know if that helps you, Paul. Yeah, I have I have a buy order in at sixty five. I'm willing to hold it there. Oh, I like that. Hey, let's let's talk again. As it's getting close, give me a call and we'll look at it together, okay? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good that's a good eye. Good good plan. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a seven million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You 
might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Hi, folks. So, Basil Chapman sitting in for the hour for Larry Pizzaventa's hour. I'm going to do a bunch of the commodities. This just goes to the E-mini, the 10-minute chart of the S&P E-mini. Had a big spike uh, earlier uh, this morning. It was down at the uh, just above the 200-period moving average, which is a 37.24, and then whoosh, it screams up to 37.81.25. Now. I could give this an alternate count. I could call this an F. Now, one of the things that I, I wish, I, I really must uh, speak to Trade Station one day. I've always wanted to do this. I'll see if I can do it this way. I've always looked at chart patterns and said there are times where the X axis can give you the Y axis, either the time or the price. And it sounds funny, but if I had a compass and I could put the little, uh, the little pin right there, and draw the arc like that, you'd be able to get as much on the side, that's a horizontal line, as you got to the upside. And this says that it's a little bit overdone right now and it could pull back. So I'm calling this a peak B if there's no new high in this 10 minute bar. And then I think we should squeak to a C and then squeak to a D. It doesn't have to go that much higher. So I still see upside action as possible unless there is a close on a 10-minute bar, that is the full bar itself, closes under 37.62. We're at 37.74 right now. The close says you can have to restart an entire buy mode, but the MACD is fantastic. The stochastic's at 92%. What more could you ask for? That's what you want. Um, relative strength is just pulled back a little bit. And the on-balance volume did give you a little bit of a reversal overbought situation right here. But I'm looking at this and saying it is still positive in the 10-minute chart, but you did get a peak E in the one-minute chart, and you pull back. And remember what I had said earlier? I, did I do this during this show or during my show? I said, look at the look at the nine-period moving average in the one-minute chart. Remember, Larry is all about particular techniques. Uh, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien. Uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, we're all here with our different techniques. And that's one of the reasons why we have so many people uh, so eagerly listening for years and years and years here at TFNN because it's, it's information that's been based on years in many decades in some cases of not just experience but testing and, and, and retesting different techniques. But look, when the nine-period moving average went green, 
at 9.07 this morning, it stayed green all the way to 11.12. And at 9, what did I say? Did I give a price? At 37.33, let's go to the high of the day, not even the low. 37.33 was the, was the number at 9.07. And let's go to the low of the of the minute bar. That's I'm talking about the minute bar uh, right here when it went pink at eleven twelve. Let's go to three three seven three seven seven six. I would say, uh, what is that? That's a forty point forty point move with one technical thing in a one minute chart. Is that not a fantastic indicator? Look at that two hundred period moving average resistance resistance and then whoosh. Rocket ship to the upside, and now it's pink. Uh, so that's just one little technique. Now, enough with that. Let's just go to all the different things I said I would do uh, during Larry's hour, because I know a lot of people are listening to um, the commodities. That's what they're interested in. If you look at the dollar, the dollar has turned down from a peak GSAC. So far, I'm thinking that I'm going to keep the, 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 the alternate count. But most of it really looks like we've probably been at 105.79. We could be seeing some kind of a pullback. However, I like to do this. Look, the weekly chart, the, the MACD is just flattening out a little bit, still very strong. The stochastics flattening out under 80%. I love over 80%. I love over 90%, but it's now at 79.16. So there's a little bit of weakness. But that nine-period moving average, remember we were talking about it just a moment ago in the one-minute chart? Look at this weekly. Since it broke above right there, the week of the 25th of June, a year ago exactly, 25th of June 2021, the dollar, my indicator, and we've been long the dollar since 90.07 back in 2018. We've watched it go to 102.99. We've taken two little bits off, I think, in 96. I, I can't remember. At least one, uh, and it dropped down to 89.21. Now it's back again. Um, and in the weekly chart, alternate count G stash C, MACD is good. Look, the nine is way above the 14. To get the nine to go back uh, pink underneath the 14 period moving average, you'd probably have to see either a huge sudden waterfall cascade to the downside or just a slow grind to the downside that says it's trading at 99. Probably 97, 98 to 97 to get that to turn pink and negative. So so far, on a bigger in a bigger context, the um, the dollar is holding really well. Nine is way above the 14 in the daily. Nine is way above the 14 in the uh, weekly, and the nine is way above the 14 in the monthly. And it's only in leg C. So this says it should go to a leg D to a higher highs. Right now it's consolidating. USD JPY, that's the counterpoint. That's the, um, I'm sorry, that is not the counterpoint. That is the, the one that moves in the same direction very often, most of the time as the dollar, but not in the same percentage or anything like that, even chart pattern, just the same direction. Leg E in the monthly chart, look at this huge move. This is the dollar Japanese yen. Beautiful rectangle that goes to a cup formation after an arch uh, turnaround uh, from the high that was made back in 2015. It's broken out, and the MACD strong stochastics at 91%. Fabulous action. Strong leg E in the uh, month of June. So far, doing really well. Weekly chart has extended above the 300. I, I use 300%. It's not a Fibonacci number. I've always used it. I love that extension because that's where many things happen. But this has gone way beyond at 136.19, up 1.08 today. Finally in leg D. This says we're getting close to the yen, just starting to make a potential short-term top. We haven't got it yet. I'm just saying my yellow light is flashing. It is green. But my yellow light is flashing to say just be a little careful here, especially when you put it together with the uh, the dollar at this particular point. But look at the EUR USD. This is now in three time frames. Daily on the left is has done the H pattern, but so far it's successful because it hasn't taken out the left side low of 1.02, I think it was. 1.035. Uh, and here we are at 1.55, trying to have an H pattern that goes to a lowercase m pattern. Look at that. This has a chance to go to that. 
So yes, there could be a bit of a rally. Could go to 1.063 uh, at this point if the dollar is going to have a, a continued uh, a relaxation and its up move, a little digestive phase. But the weekly chart says this H has to, to, to turn this around and become the dreaded H pattern that that morphs into a very positive cup formation or deep cup formation. You're going to have to see. 1.055, nope, nope, that's where we are. 1.062, the pink nine period moving average taken out and a push way above 1.07, the 14 period moving average. I think that's going to be kind of hard to do. I did that, I did that, I did that. Um, I, I did a question about crude oil. I'll do that right now. Yes, crude oil is making some kind of a double top here. I think crude oil is in a digestive phase. I'll be back in a moment. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charted software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. I'm Basil Chapman, and I'm sitting in for Larry Pizzavento. Larry wasn't able to make it today, and it's my pleasure to do this. And I'm going through different commodities, different aspects to uh, to what I know. Larry always looks at, he has his left side, right side price time match in the one-minute chart from the low that was made at 1036 at 3768. It runs up to a peak E with a doji candle double top at 11 o'clock. It goes to 3781.25. And the left side, right side price time match says that by 11.25, it should retest the left side low. It hasn't done that yet, but it looks like it still could do that. This is that arch formation that I always talk about. And I often talk about how prices can, uh, we often think of on the downside, it, it's a much sharper move uh, than going to the upside, but actually, much of the time, 
you can move to the upside and move to the downside in the same number of bars with the same type of pattern. Look at this. It's pretty much the same type of pattern, a little bit deeper pullbacks. But here we are in the one-minute chart testing at 3.772. And what I said was, uh, what did I say? Close under 3.58. Did I say 3? Oh, I can't remember now. In, in the 10-minute chart, it would be very negative. But so far, it's holding quite nicely. And it is, I'm still calling it a peak. Be in the 10 minutes, so I will get back to that. Meantime, back at the ranch, crude oil extended up to the 161.8 uh, area in the Fibonacci expansion. It went to, I, I usually I don't like typing these in because these are continuous contract charts, and therefore the price you type in now in a couple of weeks will be different. 121.46, I will type it in the 14th uh, high. 121.46 of course it trades in uh, what five cent increments so it's uh, it would be different but I am saying that I believe crude oil is consolidating one of the reasons is look Exxon Mobil made a peak E and look at that sharp pull back in the daily chart peak I'm calling this a peak F in the weekly because I think we're in for a digestive phase in crude oil and a leg F in the monthly look at CVX this is a Chevron uh, 182.40, the high of the 8th of June, down to the 145 level, almost the 200 period moving average, trying to rally today. I think there again, peak F in the in the weekly chart. I, it's a little premature. I should not have put that uh, down arrow in. I really have to wait for the full week, so I'll just put a question mark here. Question mark. I believe it will be a down arrow. Let me get rid of this one. That was just some slip of the hand and that that says to me there's no question about that that is a peak f it couldn't be anything else because of the deepness of the pullback in the weekly chart i think we're in for a digestive phase if you look at the oil service area let me look at the oih again oih made a a, a double top and now it's trading it under the it's it went under the 200 period moving average now a little bit above it i don't know what this is uh, oh this is what i wanted to talk about I did this over the weekend, and then I completely forgot to update it. In the Chapman Wave, instant restart at a peak D within two bars or two or three bars. If you go immediately higher, you can have an alternate count. So this G becomes a G slash C, and this becomes the peak D, and now we've got a peak D top in the OIH, the oil service area. Uh, that is a legitimate down arrow, but this becomes, when you've used up your down arrow, you go to the inverted v shape, the little carrot at the top. That's the signal to say that's your big test. And look at the, talk about a test. Look at the vertical test here and the vertical test here. And that just says, ha, huh, the, the technicals, the MACD, the stochastic, the on-balance volume, everything was fantastic at this high that was made in the OIH the week of the 22nd of April. And look what happened. It went to a higher high on the 10th of June. And look at the technicals. You deflected lower in the MACD. Stochastic was way under 80%. The on-balance volume had uh, a V-shaped turnaround. So this just says, and this is a peak, a leg E in the monthly chart. Uh, I, I think that there's a chance. That's the reason why I think that this rally in the market could turn out, despite what all, all the all the bears are saying, on a short-term basis, it could turn into more intermediate term, only in the sense that it lasts more than two to three weeks. <laughs> I don't know yet. We don't. This is the first day of the turnaround, so I really am only speculating. So, but it's saying, look at this DBA, which is my uh, real long from 13.77 in the DBA, the DBA Agricultural Fund. Um, been long since for about two years now. It's screamed up to the 22s, hit 23, and now it's down at 2170. I think this is also the big. This is a, probably a G in the in the weekly chart and an E in the monthly chart. And if you look at the big picture, the big picture says we were once at 5350 in the DBA back in 2000, February of 2008. So there's a long way to go, but this is a little digestive phase in the. Uh, in the weekly chart, just gone really sideways for the last couple of months. And I wouldn't be surprised if it actually has to test 21, maybe even 20.50. And then we start up again. So that's the way I'm looking at the agriculture. Look at wheat. That's wheat. Uh, wheat is trading, um, had a peak D in the weekly chart. And this is a continuous contract, so the price could change. But it was at 13.75 and a quarter back in the week of, November, of March the 11th. 
And look, you've got your dreaded H pattern here. It looks like an inverted V right there. If we take out that left side low, which I think is a possibility this week, either this week or uh, soon, that is this low. If it closed below the low of April the 1st, the week of April the 1st of 983, if we close in the 975 area, all of a sudden you're looking at the monthly chart saying, wow, that big spike to the upside um, right there. That, remember I had a whole thing on the Chapman Wave Roman candle how perfect it was. We went to a high of 30, well, 13.63 and a half. It's probably changed now. Yep, now it's 13.75 and a quarter. That was the high of the 8th of March. And I said, if within two days, if we cl if we have a, a session, that intra-session, we go below this midpoint of the, of the wick, the lower wick. If we go below 12.55, there's a real good chance not only will we test the low, we could take it out. Well, we did that. Then we had an inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle, and we went even lower. So this says that the move up in wheat could test the 9, 9.54 or get close to the 200-period exponential moving average, uh, the, corn, the soybeans. Um, this is a very choppy move. You remember, I talk about a rectangle, and I say in a narrow rectangle move, You've got to be careful because if there is a, a sideways action and eventually it suddenly goes to a peak D and pulls back, it could go right to a halfway point of the rectangle. That would say 1644. It's at 1688 right now. If it takes that out, it could even go to the bottom of the rectangle. So it's just saying soybeans holding okay right now. It's down today, down 14 uh, at 1688. This is the continuous contract. But if you look at the weekly chart, that is a peak E slash C. It looks to me like it could very well turn into an E. Only a C in the monthly, and that says it should still go higher looking at in 2022. Soybeans, looking at corn, corn as we say here in the Boston area, made a peak D in the weekly chart, a peak F with a, with a head and shoulders pattern, um, plunged to the 720 area, ran up to the 800, and now it's down at 763. This says to me, Corn is also in the digestive phase. So this is one of the reasons why I said to subscribers over the weekend that with the commodities pulling back, with oil pulling back, there's a chance that there is some relief to the upside. Oh, let's look at the jets. This is the U.S. airline index. It's rallying, yeah, rallying a little bit, up 13 cents at 673 with oil coming down. It's not down, oil is not down enough to really help them. I'll be back. Dow's up 529. Basil Chapman sitting in for Larry Pizzamento's hour. I'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for Dave's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right, folks. Basil Chapman sitting here for the hour. Hope you got uh, not that well, so uh, I, I think he just didn't feel that he could do the show. So I said I'll, I'll sit in and do it because I wanted to also look at commodities. And I just wanted to show you this is the five-minute chart made a peak E top in the E mini, went to a trough, uh, a leg B to the downside. On the downside, we use lowercase letters, and the nine-period moving average is still green, but it's close to turning pink. And I believe that I said in the 10-minute chart, if there was a close on a 10-minute bar below 37.58, I'm sure I said that because it had to be below the 14-period um, moving average, and 37.60 would be the obvious number, so I would go a little bit below it. It needs to go a little bit below it to say maybe be negating this peak B, and it could turn into alternate count. But so far, everything's holding pretty darn well, and that's going to be the big surprise if instead of seeing as up 543 in the Dow, uh, 90 in the S&P at this point, instead of seeing us down uh, 250 from this level, only up 200 and something in the Dow after 2 o'clock and only up 45 or less at 2 o'clock uh, after 2 o'clock this afternoon, we're holding really well. Those shorts will have to cover. And I suspect this could, I mean, we were looking at it. I looked at so many Dow, the Dow charts, just everywhere. I was looking at charts, charts, charts over the weekend when I had a chance. Um, and I have to tell you that the over, oversold levels of many of these just suggest that we might have more price in initially, uh, but then get time. And price just kind of filters in because you've got time to the upside. We'll see. But this is just early in the turnaround phase, but I do believe it's turnaround phase. So a couple of questions are coming. Could I look at um, a wood? I always talk about wood. This is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF. Now, that is looking ugly. And the reason why I say it's looking ugly because it was holding very well for quite some time. Monthly chart, peak B. Daily chart made a peak D with a double top, very negative double top, pulls back. And what I would said before, maybe I'll just do this. Oh, let me do this now. Um, I show my subscribers to my opening call every weekend. We have a good look at this and discuss it in greater detail. This is the 30-year, 10-year, and 5-year yields, T1 and T note yields. It has wood, the iShares, Global Timber and Forestry ETF on the right. And it has the uh, Philadelphia Housing Index uh, at the bottom right. So look at this, what happened. The five-year and the 10, but the five-year screamed above the 30 last year. The 30-year went to 3.472. 34.72 was the high in the uh, yields. This is a T-bond, the white one. You can't even see it here. You can't even see it today, this week, uh, because the uh, five is still above the uh, 30. So this just says to me that yields have extended to the point where, I, in a pattern that I haven't seen in decades, right? Um, let me just squeeze this a little bit to show you. There we are. So you can go back to, I can go back further, but for now I'll just go back to, yeah, let's just go there. We'll go back to that double top there in 2014. Look at the distance between the white, the 30-year T, T-bond, uh, this is TYX, 30-year yield, 
This is a ten. This is the ten-year T-note yield at thirty point thirty-six. Well, the prices have changed as well, and the five-year back at peak D. All of these, and look at the distance. And then all of a sudden, you get this cluster formation in November of two thousand and eighteen. Remember, Fed talks about raising rates, and you get the smash to the downside of the market into the December low. And then look what happened. It pulled. It, there was this cluster formation, but not very little overlapping. And then all of a sudden, and you come down to a whopper of a pullback. Um, that was the low of, well, the five-year did it before the 30. Let's go to the 30-year. The 30-year low of, of course, this was March of 2020 when we got that massive turnaround in the in the uh, general market in March. And uh, so that low was 8.37. Is that still the case? I really have to check that because... It's a continuous contract. Uh, sixteen point forty-six. No, call me sixteen. It's this one right here. Uh, I don't want to waste time. Uh, let's go to this. Oh, it is smoothed out. So it's eleven instead of eight. All right. Well, whatever that low was, right there, and now, and then it screams up to twenty-five oh five and pulls back, and all of a sudden, here we are, thirty-four point seventy-two. We're above all the other yields in the weekly chart going back to 2014. So we have been here, and we were rallying. You remember the big move from 2009, the low, um, the one that Larry calls so perfectly? Um, and here we are. Wood, the global uh, timber and forestry ETF, was doing beautifully. Look at the rectangle pattern. It went to a peak. I believe it was D, and then it pulled back sharply. And now it's at way below that. It's making a propeller shaft move to the downside. And the housing, Philadelphia Housing Index, talking about um, the rectangle with a propeller shaft, close the window, save the window. Let me show you this. The IWM, the Russell 2000, what did it do? For a year, it went sideways in a rectangle fashion. Look at that rectangle. Then went to a peak D above the resistance, and kaboom, it went all the way down and took out the, the, the base of 207. And in 2022, it's just come, made lower lows and lower highs. So this rec long rectangle formation is something to keep note of. And what on earth was I talking about? Uh, it was in one of the indexes, one of the, one, of the, one of the things we were looking at. Now, this is something else. Um, if you're looking at, I did that, I did that, I did that, gold. How could I not have done gold yet? If you're looking at gold, remember the arch formation? Well, so far it's successful, even with the dollar up at multi-year highs, gold has held well. And gold to me has always been the icon of geopolitical angst, nervousness. Countries and huge financial concerns go to gold. And what we've seen is that in the pattern that I often talk about, in this, look at this beautiful cup formation right here. If you check this high that was made back in the in gold continuous contract back in, this is a weekly chart, the 7th of August of 2020. Look at the technicals, how strong they are. If you ch check the technicals right here, uh, the week of the 11th of March of 2022, Look, the MACD is much lower than it was there. The stochastic is under 80%, is negative. And the unbalanced volume, yes, is actually a little bit better, but it's starting to pull back. And that's one of the reasons why I think you've held this uh, Chapway falling axe formation. Uh, I shouldn't have mentioned it now. I have to show it. Uh, okay. Chapway falling axe formation is this particular pattern here. So the falling axe is this pattern here where you see prices run up and then you have lower highs and much lower lows, and then you start to stabilize, and then you take it out and you go one to one to the upside. It's kind of what we saw right here. Whoops, right here. And there it is. So you're coming down, coming down, and then you try to take it out, but you didn't succeed. But what you did was you did the inversion, and the inversion is where you're coming down and you're ready you make much higher highs and higher lows and then you take it out and you can do one to one to the downside. So you've done that once. Are you going to do that again? Well, the way gold is handling all these vicissitudes of, of, of 
you know, disruption in the markets, I think so far it's held very well. If it closes under 1750 on a weekly basis, that'll be negative. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's at 530. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. with that Mozart Overture just about to wrap us up uh, we're looking at the uh, one month chart still at that peak E pulling back right on the 200 period moving average as I said before we start to close under 37.58 in the 10 minute chart then I have to there's a chance we might have to recount this but I from everything I'm looking at there's such an oversold condition that many stocks are ready to have a rally that should be more than a one or two days, should maybe be a week and a half, maybe even two weeks. I, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Uh, meantime, back at the ranch, what we are looking at here is, uh, I didn't do platinum. I was asked, could I please do platinum? Just let me get there real quickly. Platinum is PL, there we go. Platinum made a peak C, made a peak D in the weekly chart at about 1200 on the continuous contract and it's starting to look a little bit weak here. It kind of fits in the same category as gold. It's just, it's pulling back. Uh, it hasn't broken down yet. It's pulling back. I, I should mention gold. If gold closes at any on a weekly basis under 1770, Se it closes, that is. Under 1770, that's going to be negative because once again, this Chapman inverted falling axe formation inside track support level has been taken out. Silver, that's what I was asked about. I forgot about that. Look at that rally. Goes to peak D in the smallest little move and the quickest, peak A, B, C, D, and then it pulls back. 
Silver needs to get to the 23s as a 21.77 right now. 23s, and I'll say, wow, now I can try for the 23.60 200 period moving average. So keep that in mind, and we'll just do the VIX very quickly. If the VIX index by the end of the day, instead of it being a 30.33, sees the market pull back from here about 150 to 180 down points, and the VIX goes to 30.80 or more, then I think we've got a lousy close. But if it holds really well in the market, and all of a sudden the VIX goes to 29.70 and then to the 14 period moving average of 29.30 over the next day or two. This could really help the general market. So with that, I'm Basil Chapman sitting in for uh, the hour of Larry Pesavento and uh, I hope it was helpful going through all these different commodities and uh, I, I'm hoping that we will be back tomorrow. Check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. We've had some really nice trades over the last couple of days. And uh, stay tuned. We've got great programming coming up. Think or swim. Then you've got uh, Steve Rhodes, Dave White, and Tom O'Brien. Have a great day, and thanks for